Good morning. How's everybody today? Good morning. Why don't you stand up and find someone that you haven't spoke to recently and say hi to them. I hope it's not your spouse, all right? If it is, get that fixed up right now, okay? That's okay? Is everybody good? We're going to have a good morning this morning, yeah? How many had a good morning so far this morning? Yeah, me too. It's going to get better. It's just going to get better. Okay, zip it. In the love of Jesus. Uh, a few announcements. <clears throat> the first announcement is, I'd appreciate your prayer this morning. I'm suffering from my allergy stuff or something, so I appreciate it. I covet you guys' prayers. Uh, the soup in the park was a hit. Thank you guys for everybody that made soup and came out. Um, if you did and you don't have your container, it's downstairs on the countertop somewhere, I think. There's that. Um, what else do we have going on? Oh, this is inside out. No wonder I'm confused. My wife did that. It's good. She's not here. She slipped out. She slipped out. Yes, yes. We are in the process of forming a prayer team. Um, if you are a prayer warrior, if you have a heart for prayer, if it's something God is stirring you towards, if he's moving you that direction, see Dale and Connie. They're right there. Heading up the prayer team. Um, it's pretty important, pretty big deal, prayer is, talking to Jesus. So, yes. Uh, the other announcements are in here in plain English. If you need uh, any further explanation, see somebody that's more responsible and intelligent than me, such as her or him. So, we're just going to go into worship this morning. I'm going to pray a blessing that our worship is pleasing to him this morning, yeah? Many of you like to be in the presence of the Lord, yes? Doesn't it feel good? It's just a good place to be. When you know God is present, when you know He's here, the Scripture says in His presence is the fullness of what? We say it here quite a bit at West End. So we invite Him to come. Intentional in the mornings about saying, God, we want you to be here this morning. We invite you, God, to be here with us, to hang out. If you're a father or if you're a parent, you know what it's like when your kids come running, you know? Especially if you're a truck driver. My dad, I know there's a lot of truck drivers in here. My hats are off to you guys. Because my dad would be gone sometimes for a week, and you know how that stinks. And when he got home, you know, you could hear the, that truck coming out the street, and I'm like, yeah, Dad's home. Hopefully he's going to take us hunting or fishing or something. But there's an excitement that builds, Yes. So a whole week long, we get, to, we get to be in the presence of God, but today we get to hang out with Him corporately. So do yourself a favor this morning and just invite Him to do what He wants to do with you this morning, yes? Heavenly Father, we say good morning to you, God. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your faithfulness, God, that you don't change. No matter what our circumstances are this week, whatever happened, whatever we did do, whatever we didn't do, God, you don't change. We thank you for that, Father. It is so good. Lord, I just pray over this service today that it blesses you. And I pray over our other area churches, God, today that what they do honors you, God, and encourages the believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give them a hand. Give them a shout. Lord, I thank you for that, that truth. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning, God. I just pray that it enriches and empowers us as we go out of here to just, just be on fire for you, Jesus. In your name, Holy Spirit, come and teach. We look forward to what you're going to do. Amen. And amen. You guys can have a seat. Something different a little bit today. Is this more, is my microphone on? No? Oh, there we go. Check, check, check. 
I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to really dig into it. What do you think about yourself? Oh, some kids went downstairs. Is there someone for kids? We didn't go down. Oh, you didn't? Okay, good. We have hatchets and chainsaws down there to entertain the kids and stuff. But if I had to ask you what you think about yourself, what would you tell me? Well, I'm a happy person. I'm a generous person. I'm pretty joyful. I like people. I don't like people. People annoy me. Our pastor's a nerd. Uh, do, do, what would you say? What would you say about yourself? It's worth, it's worth digging into, because I've never thought about it until we were in worship this morning. And I know what God put on my heart to say, and it's... This is a real short word to encourage you, to empower you, hopefully to enlighten you. It's God's word. wasn't my idea. I read it in a book. None of this stuff I say is my idea. I either get it from Tommy or Justin or Josh or the Holy Spirit, okay? So you can never credit me for saying it. I, I don't take credit. I, I don't. I, I love getting revelation from the Holy Spirit, though. Like, when things hit, it's just like, cool, God. In Ephesians, he says, Paul says, I, I pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation for you guys, for the church at Ephesus. And revelation is just, we, we know what that is. It's like, ah, oh, it's the light bulb moment. It's the kerplunk moment when we're get, when something, when we get it. But in order to get there, we need to know that we don't know stuff. Yes? How many of us are good at that? We, we pretty much have it all figured out, right? But revelation is that. So I got some cool stuff to share. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to start in Genesis. And it's just it's pretty simple. Basic, we, we, we all know this, right? We, we, we forget our Bibles, don't we? Yeah, sure, we all do. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every, every living thing that moves on the earth. Can you go back to the first verse there, kiddo? Look at this. God created man in his own image. So in order for God to make something that looks like him, it means that God has an opinion of himself. Yes? God actually has an identity. Yes? And he's not proud or arrogant or boastful when he says, I am God and there is no one like me. I am holy. I am perfect. I am righteous. There's, he's not being arrogant. Why? Because it says identity. Yes? We have an identity crisis in this country right now. People don't know which bathroom to use. Our kids are being told that they can decide what God already decided. Male and female, he created them. Yes? Amen. I don't want to go down the wrong ditch here, but this is a major, major, major issue in our lives. For you and I. And you might think, you might be sitting there thinking, well, I don't think I'm the opposite gender. And I don't really struggle with that. And that's fine. But if you don't know who you are in Christ, you still have an identity, identity crisis. If you don't walk out of here empowered, emboldened, enlightened, equipped to say, I am a child of God, I have power, I have influence, I have authority over the enemy, I go out in the world and I influence people with love, I, I'm not second rate, I'm not stupid, I'm not fat, I'm not ugly, I'm not worthless, I'm not unspiritual, all that is crap. I'm just going to preach it straight up. Because if we don't get this, Understand that I am priceless. Everybody say it. You are priceless. I am priceless. Say it like you mean it. I am priceless. Convince me. Yes? You are priceless. There is not another one like you on the planet. You are a prototype. One out of billions. Created for a very specific purpose. The purpose that you were born for, no one else can do. Out of billions and billions of people, you have one thing. Maybe two, maybe three. Maybe some of you have half a dozen. 
But my point is this. There's, there's not a second-rate individual in this house. Amen. Not a one. Precious. Priceless. God, wait. Man, he loves you. Check out. Check out. Go to the next verse. There was more to this. I think. I think I had more. I don't have much today. Clock operator. Go to the next verse. There you go. He blessed them and, and said, go multiply. Now, be fruitful and multiply. I don't want to hurt little ears in here this morning. But we have permission to multiply. Glory to God. And, be, and, and rule over the earth and subdue it. We have a grand commission to take care of this sucker out there. It, it is ours. God didn't say, hey, I'll let you have it and rent it. You, you pay me rent. Give me, give me 10% on a Sunday and you can stay in my house. No. Listen, you're, you're, you and I are that precious that he gave us the earth to rule over it, to rule over the fish, the air, the, the sea, and everything that, every single thing that moves on the earth. If God made us in his image like him, he didn't, we're not God, okay? We are like him. Everybody say, I'm not God. It's important for you to understand that. If you think you're God, then we have a problem, you know. That's, that's, that's what got Satan in, in trouble in the beginning. But we have a great commission. The earth belongs to us. Yes? It's ours to take care of. And I would like to submit to you that it's not just... Well, let's, let's be conservationists and make sure, you know, don't be burning tires and stu stupid things like that. When you're done changing your oil, don't dump it in the storm drain. Yes? But there's a grander thing here. When I think when God says, listen, I want you to subdue the earth, what's the opposite of something that's subdued? Wow, out of control, nuts, like your pastor, crazy, cuckoo, off the rails, just going bonkers. If that's the earth that we are told to subdue, we have a little bit more to do than just to take care of the land, yes? That's your job. It's my job. We get to. Not we have to, we get to. We get to subdue the earth. Think about that. Did you ever wake up one morning and think to yourself, hmm, I wonder what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to go hunting. I'm going to go to the soccer game. You know what? I want to subdue the earth today. I want to be a subduer. What do you do for a living? I am a subduer. Hi, my name is Dan the Subduer. I subdue the earth. Did you ever think of that way? No, me neither. Till this morning. Actually, right now. Honestly, I don't get this. The Holy Spirit just slaps me upside the head and says, you're a subduer. I didn't know that. It says it right here. Subdue it. So go, subdue, subdue. <laughs> yes? What does it look like? It, there's going to be times of tumultuous things in your life where it's at work or it's at school or it's job or it's, of course, it's not here. But there's, there's things where your influence is going to calm things down. Yes? How many times in the Bible does it say about the words of a uh, the your mouth can fix stuff? <laughs> That's what I, I can't think of the scripture. It's gone. It's the soft answer turns away wrath is is one of them. But there's lots of scriptures in Proverbs. If you don't want, if you don't believe me, read your Bible. They say, listen, what comes out of you has power to tame a situation. No one else on the planet has it but you. God is going to give you thoughts. He's going to give you words. He's going to give you ideas. Guess how? Through the Bible, through Revelation. If it doesn't line up with Scripture, it's not from God. But He will do that to give you exactly what is needed for a given place, time, situation, person, you name it. Because you're precious. How many of you feel precious? I don't always feel precious. I'll be honest. But according to God's word, I'm holy, I'm righteous, and all that stuff, I'm like, really? So, is it about my feelings, or is it about truth? This is why emotions are a careful thing. A 
dangerous thing to guide ourselves with because emotions, we always hear these lofty sayings like, follow your heart. No, don't. Sorry. Bad news. God, God has a better idea. Well, the heart of man is evil and wicked and deceitful. And I'm, 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 this is really encouraging. Yay, Dan. You're telling me I'm a mess. I'm, oh, I'm listening. Say, we need him. Outside of his holy and righteous guidance, influence. Did I hurt any feelings yet? Good. I'm not going to want to do that ever, ever, ever. But if we just guard your emotions. There's a couple more scriptures. Romans 5. Jesus did, Jesus did this. But he demonstrates his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. To, to think about this for, with me for a second. When Jesus, before Jesus came down, did you think he thought, hmm, I wonder if they want me to come down there and provide a means of salvation. Hmm, nah, I'll stay up here. I'm pretty busy today. I got a lot going on. Did you ever, parents, did you ever at Christmas time have an idea to get your, your kids something for Christmas and you know they're just going to absolutely love it? And you can't wait to get, you can't wait till they unwrap it Christmas morning. If you're not a parent, you will understand that. Unless, unless you're poor, then you they will be like, Maybe here's a rock or something or a stick. I'm kidding. <laughs> but you get you get the idea. I, Jesus, listen, he didn't say, hey, whenever you clean yourself up, I'll come down and cru I'll get crucified. Whenever you guys get your act together, get your act together, I'll fix it. Whenever you stop sinning so much, whenever you stop, whenever you read your Bible more, I'll come down and fix it. He's like, no, I got something really good for you because you're precious and you're precious and you're precious and you're priceless and there's not another one on the planet like you and you are beautiful and you are amazing and there's not a, a I created you, I created you, I did it, it was not a mistake, you were not a cosmic accident, you were not someone's boo-boo, you were not a slip, you were not... No, there's not a one of us in here. I don't care how conception happens. There is not a mistake. Amen. Some of us were conceived out of wedlock. <gasps> David? Solomon? Just saying. Don't do that to yourself. Someone needs to hear that this morning. If you're here today and you're conceived out of wedlock, or you had children out of wedlock, and you curse yourself, rebuke that curse right now. You are better than that. Do not receive that from the enemy. We, we all make mistakes. Listen, I'll just be honest. Most of us in this room could say, it could have been me too. If I'm being honest, just being real, but don't, the, the, we deal with this a lot in the freedom ministry. Well, I was born out of wedlock, or I wasn't wanted, or I wasn't, I was an oops. I was born 20 years after my other kids and my parents never wanted me. It affects your identity. If that's you in here this morning, and you think you're an oops or a boo-boo, or you had an oops or a boo-boo, rebuke it. Say no. Let that, get that curse off of you. Yes? You are clean. We got that fixed up. I didn't know we were going to go there. I didn't know we were going to go a lot of places. I didn't know we were going to get subdued. It's just the word. I love it. I love the word of God. It's so good. I feel so subdued. Okay, we're gonna, this is going off the rails. They're going to fire me. I need an identity. Oh. I love preaching the word. Are you guys good? Is it, are you getting anything? Because I am. I love the Word of God. It's so cool. It's just so rich. Okay, Psalm 139, 13 through 16. This is a handful. This is a really good word for our day and age right now. This blows my mind. God says, the writer of Psalms is saying this to God, basically, if you understand the context. He says, for you, form my in, for you form my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. 
I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was made in secret and skillfully brought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Did that just blow your mind? Because it did mine, sitting on the couch last night, and I said to her, I was like, the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. I'd say you have a little bit of value to God. Think about it. Before, is it, am I the only one to just, sheesh, moment? Like, wow. Before I was a hunk of goo in my mom's belly, God, the days were ordained for me. Meaning that he knew that this very day would come. October, what is it? November, we're in November now, November 6th. 3rd. It's not the 3rd. Let me get my phone out, I'll prove it. I can do everything with this thing. It's the 6th. My phone told me so. Uh, yeah, be careful. That November 6th, you would be here at... 11.45, or wait, 10.45. I'll be all right. So. <laughs> I have to get to my mom's for lunch, so I won't be here at 11.45. We're having pumpkin stew. It's amazing. Have you ever all had it? They hollow out a pumpkin and put cooked stew inside of it? I'm going to go subdue that. I'm, a, I'm about done preaching. Zip it. Zip it in the front. Security. Um, but he loved you enough to know everything about your life. Yes? Alright. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. That you receive your value this morning. That you receive... Listen to that little cry. Glory to God. Is that not beautiful? Out of the mouths of babes. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, God. I thank you. Lord, I just, I just pray a blessing of impartation over each one of us in here this morning that we walk out of here knowing our value, God, and that we act like it accordingly, humbly loving the ones that you put around us, Lord, humbly loving our family, our spouses, our kids, our neighbors, whatever, Lord. I just pray that we would get it. So Holy Spirit, seal the deal. Make it real. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I feel like we should do a worship song or two. Um, if you're new here, this one's on us. If you're old here, come and give. Um, it's part of your worship. It's in the book. I don't make it up. I don't like talking about money. He will get weird about money. But God says, hey, it's all his anyways. 90% is a pretty good deal to live on, yes. He could ask for, he could ask for half, but he's not. It's 10 or 15 if you feel generous. <laughs> so that matter is settled. You are his. You are precious. And I remembered the story I was going to tell you a few weeks ago. <laughs> Finally. Do you have time? Sure you do. Yes. You can't go anywhere. It's so about five or six years ago I was invited to go to the Moonshine with the Moonshine trailer sales to a NASCAR race to help sell merchandise. And my buddy and I, Pudge, went and we'd work the trailer. My prayer right away was, God, I want to meet someone famous and pray with them. I want to minister to Jeff Gordon. 
because a pastor friend of mine had met him years before and said, I know you were busy with the Lord and you've kind of slipped away. What's going on? He's like, yeah, you're right. I have. So I said, God, I want to pray with Jeff Gordon. So we go and we work the trailer and the night before the race we go out to Outback Steakhouse. We're waiting for our table and finally we get the buzzer and walk over to where the hostess is and my buddy Pudge stops and looks down. Guess who's sitting there? Take a guess. There shit's Jeff Gordon. I'm like a deer in the headlights. I'm like, you got to be kidding me, God. And I could tell Jeff Gordon did not want to be bothered at all. <laughs> and so Pudge said something like, hi, and I just shook his hand, and I'm like, ah, okay. Said a little prayer silently, and we went, we went to our table, because Jeff was busy. I think he was talking to his crew chief. But the next day, <coughs> Jeff Gordon didn't finish the race because of electrical trouble, and me and Pudge kind of thought, oh, Hey, they were talking about the car. Like, make sure to plug that thing back. Oh, there's Dan and Pudge. So we're just thinking it was our fault he lost the race. That's insignificant. But what is significant was as I walked away and missing my opportunity to pray with Jeff Gordon, I sat down in the, in, the, in the seat, and the kid that came over, I looked up at him, and God said to me, clear as a bell, this one is just as important to me. And I thought to myself, how selfish am I? pretty selfish. You're more important than Jeff Gordon. As important as Jeff Gordon. Go in his strength of yours. Get out of here. Have a good week. That's my story. I love you guys.